Hi students, it's Mr. Sagers back with another video for Earth and Space Science. The topic of today's video is the hydrologic cycle. By the end of this video, you should be able to develop and use a model to illustrate various ways that water on Earth cycles through Earth's various natural reservoirs. Let's get to it. Of all Earth's defining characteristics, surely its water is the most striking. The great blue oceans, the streaks of white clouds, and the polar ice caps make Earth stand out among all the other planets of the solar system. Water is such a fundamental resource on Earth, and we often take it for granted. Earth's hydrosphere is seemingly everywhere and affects nearly all aspects of our lives. We drink water, we bathe with it, we swim in it, and we try to stay dry from it when it rains. Although we most often think of liquid water when we think of Earth's hydrosphere, don't forget that water also comes in solid and gaseous forms as well. Ice sheets cover the poles in winter. Snow falls when temperatures drop below freezing. And conversely, the sun evaporates water from the Earth's surface and fills our atmosphere with water vapor. Even in the driest deserts on the planet, trace amounts of water can be detected in the air. Beneath the surface of the Earth, too, water can even be found. Seeping deep into the Earth's crust, groundwater fills vast, subterranean aquifers. So, try as we might, there is no escaping water on planet Earth. If all of Earth's water from the air, the ground, and underground were gathered into a single sphere, the volume of that sphere would be 1,000 times less than that of the Earth. Does this surprise you? All told, there are approximately 332,500,000 cubic miles of water on the Earth. That's over 300 million trillion gallons. If distributed amongst all the human inhabitants of the Earth, every individual would receive over 40 billion gallons of water each. Even though that seems like a lot, most of Earth's water is in fact unavailable for human consumption. If it weren't for the hydrologic cycle, there'd be little chance that human life could persist at all. The hydrologic cycle, or water cycle, describes the mechanisms that help cycle water through the various reservoirs on planet Earth. The word reservoir simply refers to a supply or place where a resource is stored. You are probably familiar with man-made water reservoirs and may have even visited one of them. Lake Mead, for example, is a man-made reservoir in southern Nevada. Water in this reservoir is kept in storage artificially behind the Hoover Dam. In this video, however, we will use the term reservoir more broadly to refer to any of the diverse places in which Earth's water is naturally found. Water in these reservoirs may last for just a few moments or may persist for thousands of years. Whatever the case, please note that Earth's water reservoirs are constantly changing as a result of the hydrologic cycle. Unsurprisingly, approximately 96.5% of Earth's water is found in its oceans. These include the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Oceans. Ocean water is saline or salty. As water from land flows through rivers down towards the ocean, it breaks down rocks and minerals along its journey. Among those minerals are salts that are easily dissolved in water. The world's oceans collect these salts and have become saline over billions of years. In addition to Earth's oceans, another 1% or so of Earth's water can be found in other saline reservoirs. These include landlocked lakes such as the Great Salt Lake and the Dead Sea, as well as underground saline aquifers. Similar to Earth's oceans, these salty reservoirs have no outlet or outflow through which trapped water can escape. Thus, they too collect all the dissolved salts and minerals that flow into them. As opposed to salt water, just over 2.5% of Earth's water is non-saline, or fresh water. This is noteworthy because most of Earth's land-based organisms cannot tolerate salt water and thus rely on fresh water for survival. Roughly two-thirds of the Earth's fresh water is locked away in polar ice caps and glaciers. Most of the remaining third is found in underground aquifers. An aquifer is a permeable rock layer in the Earth's crust into which water from the Earth's surface can seep. As groundwater slowly trickles downward, these aquifers typically store water for thousands of years. The remaining 1% or so of Earth's freshwater reservoirs are scattered about the surface of the Earth. These include reservoirs such as lakes, rivers, the atmosphere, and even the water contained in living organisms. Water doesn't often stay in a single reservoir for very long. The movement of water throughout Earth's reservoirs can be described through the hydrologic or the water cycle. Two of the most common mechanisms that drive movement in this cycle are the evaporating energy from sunlight and the downward pull of gravity. Energy from the sun is relentless. Every day, infrared energy drives the process of evaporation across Earth's oceans and other water reservoirs. 
Evaporation is a process where liquid water turns into a gas or vapor and then rises into the atmosphere. Stunningly, an estimated 300 trillion gallons of water evaporate globally from oceans, rivers, lakes, and other reservoirs into the atmosphere each and every day. Evapotranspiration is a similar process in that it involves evaporation of water from soil and plants, usually through plants' leaves. The process of evapotranspiration accounts for nearly 15% of all water that enters the atmosphere and is also driven by sunlight. Finally, sublimation is a process wherein frozen water in ice, snow, and glaciers transitions directly into water vapor without first melting into a liquid state. Without the evaporating power of sunlight, water would never leave the oceans, clouds would never form, and precipitation in the form of rain and snow would never fall over the continents. Thus, energy from the sun is key in powering the Earth's hydrologic cycle and replenishing freshwater reservoirs on land. Having now explored a few of the various ways that sunlight powers the hydrologic cycle, we'll now take a look at the role that gravity plays in driving water from one reservoir to another. Once in the atmosphere, water vapor rises until a change in pressure and temperature cause the vapor to condense into tiny droplets. When enough of those droplets condense, a cloud forms. As the water droplets in the cloud continue to grow in size, they eventually become too heavy to remain suspended in the atmosphere. Precipitation is the mechanism that causes water in clouds to fall to the earth under the pull of gravity. Precipitation can take many forms. Rain, snow, hail, and sleet to name a few. The process of precipitation is an important step in bringing fresh water back to the continents. When water evaporates from the Earth's oceans, it leaves behind any dissolved salts. Thus, when precipitation falls, the water is once again non-saline. Once back on land, gravity then continues to pull fresh water downward. Snowmelt runoff, groundwater flow, river discharge, and surface runoff all describe processes wherein gravity causes liquid water to flow downhill. Unimpeded, this water will eventually meander its way back into the ocean as it passes through rivers, lakes, and streams. Though it is hard to see, a large portion of water on land soaks its way into the earth through the process of infiltration and seepage. Once underground, groundwater may be stored in aquifers for thousands or even millions of years. And finally, fog drip, dew, and deposition bypass precipitation and pull water vapor directly out of the atmosphere in the form of dew drops and frost. Although there are many other processes that affect the hydrologic cycle, it is sufficient to say that the evaporating energy from sunlight and the downward pull of gravity keep the hydrologic cycle in a delicate balance as they continue to replenish Earth's water reservoirs day after day and year after year. So to recap, the hydrosphere is everywhere and can be found in reservoirs in the air, on the ground, and underground. Most of Earth's water is saline or salty and is found in the ocean. A much smaller percentage of the hydrosphere is comprised of freshwater, and most of that is locked in frozen ice caps and glaciers. Sunlight provides the evaporating energy to remove water from Earth's reservoirs and into the atmosphere. And gravity drives precipitation and causes water to eventually flow back into the ocean. Well, that wraps up our video on the hydrologic cycle. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, Ad Astra.